So last time we defeated Deathbird and now we're running around ooh, looking for what happens next and again fighting some of visual anomalies, anomalies on the capture and not exactly I think I ran all the way back to that shield point either to save Probably to save. That's probably why I did that. So now we can continue our way down the ship because we're about to enter one of the more frustrating um, parts of the game. Welcome to the science section. This is where our... Well, let's just say this is where Deathbird is going to try to cause problems for us. So she set a self-destruct sequence. So we have to uh, stop the self-destruct se sequence by destroying these power nodes. Every time we destroy a power node, the self-destruct sequence will slow down. But you can see breaking a power node, at least with Venom's basic attack, not the best way to go about doing things. So, at the same time that we're having to keep track of what's going on with, with the time uh, disparity. Okay, we don't need to destroy that. It's no. Yeah, we're not going to make this. And the reason I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to make this is right here. Yeah, it's Princess L Lalandra, who we need to rescue. Granted, we only have 20 seconds to do so. And even if I destroy this power node, uh, okay, now we have 45 seconds to do so. So now we need to destroy this thing right here which the only way we can do that is if the entire team works together. Now there's a button that tells the, the team to assist with what you're doing, but if they don't know how to get there or don't necessarily figure it out, um, it's not going to work for you. So here we are backing up. This time we're going to let Spider-Man take point um, on this little adventure. Although, if you're thinking the way I think you're thinking, you probably know that there might be a character we can use that would be slightly better at this than uh, than Spidey. A character that we have on the team right now, not, not a character we'd have to go find or whatever. Alright, so now we're going to go uh, and try the dash thing again. All right, so much faster to kill that thing with spider, Spidey's webs uh, than it was to punch it with Venom. So that that's one thing in our favor. Now I'm going to just skip those guys. Ignore that thing. Because I'm looking for the power node in the back here. And we've blown that up. Now we have a minute 24. Uh, and we're getting close to where we were last time. So we're doing things a little bit better. There she is. Alright, so now I'm trying to use Spider-Man's webs to destroy the control panel. I'm just not accomplishing it very fast and, you know, it takes a while to rebuild Spider-Man's uh, web abilities. So, and my teammates don't seem to be interested in helping out here. Um, I'm going to try some super attacks. haven't used these in a while just because um, at the level of difficulty that we're playing with and the fact that they all trigger at once, uh, they're not helping. And the fact they did no damage whatsoever to our friend the control panel over here. 
So, yeah, we're going to have to do this again. So while we're figuring that out, um, so I said that Maximum Carnage, the trade paperback, was one of the three Marvel things that I got over the uh, Christmas holidays. The other two uh, were the DVD copies of Thor Ragnarok and uh, Avengers Infinity War. All right. We did manage to free Lelandra with Captain America using his shield bash uh, to take the lead here. Now we have to go and break more of these power nodes in order to buy some more time to stop so the self-destruct stuff. Humans. Well, you're far too late. The self-destruct timer has been active. That's where you're wrong. By destroying this ship, I'll have a little vengeance. Now, to smash this console so there's no way for you to shut it off. Fools, I always have an escape plan. So I enjoyed, uh, no, it's, I enjoyed Thor Ragnarok and, uh, and Infinity War when they were released. Um, honestly though, When it comes to me and movies, uh, I really appreciate movies that sort of make me uh, or toy with, I guess toy with my emotions is the word I would use, but, and while Ragnarok and Infinity War are good, are enjoyable movies with lots of interesting moments. They didn't. St uh, neither of those two movies really spoke to me, Thank you for saving me on the answer. level of a movie that came out just over Christmas and was a relative disappointment if you look at the box office numbers. But but it was a pretty good little movie on its own, and that movie was Bumblebee. Sure. Okay. Well. I don't think I've uploaded any Transformer stuff to the channel. Um, so Bumblebee might be out of left field, but I'm thinking that all the people who skipped Bumblebee thinking that it was just going to be Transformer 6, and honestly they weren't particularly happy with the way Transformers 5 turned out. Uh, missed out on a lot of stuff. There, there was a lot of really good character building stuff in the uh, Bumblebee movie. Uh, I think I found it very easy to relate to Charlie's character. Um, I mean, there's some stuff that's not going to make a ton of sense in continuity, but th things are so much cleaner than any of the Michael Bay movies. And it, they really did a good job. Um, you know, trying to make trying to make you understand what um, how Charlie's loss of her father really you know affected every element of her life, and you know her trying to. Come back from that, and I'm sure there are moments in everyone's live lives that have been difficult uh, for them to come back from. And it may not necessarily be the death of a loved one or or a parental unit, but. You know, Bumblebee for me was a hard movie to watch all the way through without uh, tearing up. And that's what I think a successful movie should do. That's why I think the, while not necessarily my favorite character, I think that Logan is um, a better movie than 
some of the things that came out around the same time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, it's because Logan made you feel the kind of struggles that Wolverine was uh, having to go through. And the lessons he... They, they, in some cases, are very painful uh, for him to have to, to learn. I think in, on the same sort of view, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, um, I thought was was a really neat movie for that reason. And now, I think I'm lost on the Shi'ar ship. But... You know, oh well. Um... So, I mean, that's sort of my thoughts on some of the movies. Uh, I think 2018 was a really good year for movies, for me personally. It was not as good as 2017, mainly because... Okay, I think we need to, like, talk to her or something. Do we punch her? Again, 2017 had Logan and Guardians Volume 2. And that was going to... And... Thor Ragnarok, which, again, while not the same kind of thing I was necessarily looking for, was a movie that I really uh, enjoyed. I know Transformers: The Last Night's also in there somewhere, but I didn't, I didn't enjoy that movie at all. It was painful, and not, uh, not in the making you test yourself and search yourself kind of painful the way Bumblebee. Uh, could be, or Logan was. Um, but painful in that way that y you just didn't want to... I, I don't think I'll ever go back and watch Transformers 5 again. Um, I have a sort of Transformers 4 is kind of a guilty pleasure, even though it has, I mean, it has the Romeo and Juliet law scene, which is all kinds of weird. But it also... <laughs> in the same way that Bumblebee and, and Logan, and I'm, I'm not... Transformers 4 does not do this nearly to the extent, but you get, you get, Got it. you understand the frustration of Optimus Prime's character in, uh, in this. And so we just grab part of the crystal and now we can go away. So, so 2017, for me, between Logan, Guardians 2, Thor Ragnarok. Hard to beat just how those movies made me feel. 2018 had Black Panther. Um, 2018 had Infinity War. And then for me, it's a big skip on down to Venom and then Bumblebee. And Venom and Bumblebee were movies I enjoyed, again, for vastly different reasons. But they were movies that had heart. They were movies that the people involved were clearly happy to be involved in making those movies. You know, I... I the Venom movie um, gave us Tom Hardy Venom, which was something I didn't know I wanted. But I certainly like it better than 
comic Eddie Brock. I mean, in the back of my head, you know, I always had this idea of what a Venom script would look like. And it basically, I would have... Uh, basically, we've taken elements of Flash Thompson, Venom, Flash Thompson, as Venom characters. I would have grafted some of Flash's military background onto Eddie Brock, and made Brock a disgruntled veteran who is really unable to make it in the real world, um, becoming a becoming a newsman and not being able to succeed at that. Um, and then I would have cast The Rock as Eddie Brock. Because I, I just really have this whole need to, uh, to see Venom as big without Venom being, uh, just without Venom, Venom needing to be CGI Venom to be big. But they did a brilliant job with the CGI in the Venom movie. Or, not a, not a great... I'm speaking specifically of you did a good Venom and his symbiote suit. I know there's been some criticism of some of the visual quality of, of Sony Pictures productions, um, particularly in regard to the Venom movie. But Venom um, but I enjoyed I enjoyed Venom. I enjoyed Tom Hardy Venom. I hope he comes back. I hope, of course, deep down, I don't want him to come back until they have a plan to integrate Spider-Man into the story. And if they don't have a plan to integrate Spider-Man into the story, fascinating to see how they do the Carnage story. Because, you know, they're talking about doing some of these other characters, uh, like Silver Sable or Black Cat or Morbius the Living Vampire. I don't know if I can buy a Venom Morbius team up movie where they go fight Carnage. I have interfered too much already. Want Andrew Garfield Spider Man to come back, although uh, Garfield sort of wore, net, wore out his welcome with Sony's execs. So that probably can't happen. Since a return of Peter Parker, uh, not Peter Parker, um, <laughs> Tobey Maguire Spider Man. New continuity. Um, but of course, at this point, Toby's some age on him relative to the character. So a spike would be neat to see Tom Holland. Uh, already, I think, other than maybe the Marvel, as you know, who the top dogs are here, uh, to be a thing in Tom Holland's world, which is part of the Marvel Cinematic so, Universe. Why not? So... Welcome back. I understand you, know. you had a little excitement during your mission to Shia. But... The situation on Earth has grown considerably worse. Doctor Doom has easily crushed any resistance. Yeah, we're... I, it would appear you are Earth's last hope. It's clear that a Carnage movie is... Importance on your acquiring the ...is back there producer. somewhere. This device is used by Galactus when he consumes um, a planet. He is currently in the beginning stages of consuming a planet populated by the Skrull. You are welcome. But there were some really good deep messages in the Venom movie too, just like... Um, hey, you know, back. while it could be silly and fun, you know, understanding what it took... Planet. It converts the vast for Eddie Brock to basically come back the inducer will allow you after uh, uh, being a real asshole. Without it, you'd be fried and instantly. I don't think that's the first yes. time I've cursed in it's one of these of like our super soldier program. videos. So I've definitely done it in the uh, Crusader Kings the series. Into service, you know, when I managed to talk at all, because well, one of the things I found during those series is just... Once the procedure is done. You had to focus hey, on anytime. on the game. So when I was trying to live record, as opposed to, you know, going back and narrating later, 
you know, things like cursing, you know, would happen and save scumming and those sorts of things. And But that's neither here nor there. So, I've never been so glad to you know, we enter 2019. I wish I had. Um, you know, Avengers 4 is this year. Captain Marvel is this year. These are... Uh, some spoilers are uh, not spoilers so per se but trailers are already out for both movies and I, I kind of like the places that they're going um, with the Carol Danvers movie uh, it's just sort of interesting to see scrolls without the Fantastic Four not because it's a big deal, but just that I think as I think it was Sal from Comic Pop who described uh, Reed Richards as the you know Captain Kirk, you know, in the Eagles or the Klingon, and so their greatest enemy is not present. And I wonder if they're um, I wonder what kind of little hints that. You know, they could potentially give off in this uh, in the Captain Marvel movie. I mean, obvious. I think that we're going to see Nick Fury become director of Shield, or at least be well on his way to becoming director of Shield. We're going to see. We're going to see Ronan the Accuser actually do something. None can stand before We're gonna, him. You but, shall soon hail Dr. Doom you know, I'm hoping that they stay, and we will all bow you know, that it's more Kree scroll war, less secret invasion I had gone um, to your island in, hopes of in the storytelling. Although I'm sure it's going to be a blend of both. To use the nullifier against him. I foolishly attempted to battle him, but in a blinding flash of light, it and it, it's clear to me. it's going to be interesting to see how they do the Kree, because in the trailers, Kree can be anybody, and I, I don't mean in the sense that like the scrolls could be anybody, because the scrolls could shapeshift. I mean the Kree can be anybody in the fact that they're white Kree and dark Kree. How can I help you? I was under the assumption that all Kree were blue, but just because the only Kree that I was familiar with seeing in the cinematic universe were Ronan the Accuser, who was blue in Guardians, and normally is like some sort of green and yellow color in other material. And uh, Yandu. But evidently Jaiman Hansu's character in Guardians was a Kree. You know, Jude Law's character is going to be a Cree. So it, it becomes more possible that Carol Danvers, whenever she got absconded by the Cree or however she joined them. It makes more sense that she would get the idea that she was actually Cree and not human. The sister of Chris because the Cree basically look like humans, age, just with some exceptions. Which gave her hair that she could control with her mind. When they were both children, she would visit Black Bolt in his cell. They spoke using a special sign language they developed. It wasn't a prison, really. But we'll s we'll save a, a discussion of Captain Marvel and. Um, particularly Avengers 4 for a future video. Right now, I'm just getting rid of all these conversations with the Inhumans so that we can go and do the second thing that we need to do, which is, I believe, get the Muonic Inducer away from Galactus. Because, you know, things weren't hard enough. So, let's go find Lockjaw and start doing things. And, you know, with 
those little those little uh, verses from the Book of Apocalypse. Uh, we'll we'll leave for now, and we'll come back in the future. Welcome back. You did a good oh. job. Any time at all.